All right, let's see if this works. Um, it's not much of an update or whatever the heck. It's more for me, to be honest with you, to um, uh, just articulate uh, the mistakes I'm making. And I've said before, I, I'm, I'm not worried whatsoever about showing you what's going on. Um, I am a bit bummed out because this is the SPAD 8. I'm doing this guy here the from Academy. Oh, shoot, sorry. I'm not really looking. I'm sitting down. Maybe I shouldn't, but tough. Um, so yeah, it's only cost me five dollars Canadian, so I'm glad I'm still making mistakes. Gosh, man, I'm making so many. This is why I'm hoping to articulate and help uh, myself out. And I'm maybe there's one person out there that's about to start getting into this, and it's like, okay, I'm not going to do what he does. Um, yeah, and also here's a, another. Just it's like slow down and take a look at what's going on. I couldn't for the life of me figure out what the hell why this thing was a, a weird shape. And until about yesterday, I was like, oh my God, because I was constantly trying to scratch over here. And then I went, oh my God, you can use this small area to get in. Good Lord. Anyways, what I am, uh, so uh, here's, uh, I'll go through the mis things I, I should have learned uh, yet again. So I should have assembled this guy, these pieces first, and maybe this uh, stuck this nose cone in here. Sorry, I'm trying to remember to stay near the hex. I'm kind of trying to use that bit here. Um, I had a hard time, uh, so I glued these pieces in, but then I was having a hard time gluing that in because I had to put in the, the, the lower wing, and I think the lower wing was a better thing to put in first, because uh, that really solidified this bit here to figure out what was going on, but they tell you to put this in later after this. Um, so that was one thing that really helped me here, because I was constantly pushing, forcing, and I had these glued in first, which is not a smart move. Uh, the exhaust pipes because um, I was you know inadvertently not not knowing where I was having my fingers I was pushing and bending and had to re-glue the little buggers and so on and so forth so that really sucked uh, but at least like I said I'm learning the other thing was um, that I painted this and then had a ton of time uh, issues uh, gluing uh, so what do you think ended up happening happening I ended up stripping off some of the paint and so what, what does that mean later on when I go to start repainting? We're going to have a big blemish here or whatever, or unless I sand it off or so on and so forth. It's just, yet again, things to learn or to remember. Um, you know, and I used too much glue here because I had to redo over and over and flipping over again. Um, so that's one thing. Um, oh, what a bummer. I think I mentioned about the SPAD 8. I, I was like, okay, I'm not going to... Technically, I think the Turks used the um, SPAD-8. So this would have been after World War One when they were getting into their uh, Indo uh, War of Independence and all that stuff. Um, so I was like, mm, I'm not going to use it for the Ottomans. Um, then I was going to do what it is an American plane. With, it comes with an American. I don't have them around here. Um, it just didn't feel American to me. And I really want to do an American. Uh, the American plane I want to do is the... Uh, Bristol F2B, no, sorry, the DH4, uh, uh, but with a Liberty engine. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, I still have to get, figure, uh, find that model. Anyways, so I ended up getting an Albatross uh, D1 and then inadvertently found out that no, they actually, uh, the Ottomans didn't use the D1, they used the C1. I'm like, ah, oh, shoot, but I can't find it. I can't find uh, that type. Anyways, here's another thing. I'm so glad I was able to go into some pictures later because when I was looking at it, says that these things go right under the wing. They don't touch the wing struts. Oh, this seems a little crooked. Uh, but anyway, oh, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what you're seeing. Um, so I'll have to bend these in because I was looking and they are not touching. They're, they're here, not like in the wings area. So I've got to, I'm going to have to bend that down or maybe shrink that little stick thing or something, I'll figure it out. But it, yet again, I'm like, oh, darn it. Um, so I'm not going to do a French plane. And it was kind of like, oh, you know, I, I was seeing these this neat picture here. Um, it's a wonderful website. I'll pop, pop it in the link maybe. And this is a Belgian plane. And i like, oh, this is neat, this little comet stuff. And I was like, wait a minute. Don't I have uh, an old talcum powder uh, bottle? with some, uh, and I went, yeah, you do. And I went upstairs, grabbed, well, I'm on the same floor, but I went into another room and grabbed it. But when I thought about this, I was downstairs. And um, so I cut out this morning before I went off to work just to see if it would work. And just rough, rough cut, obviously. I'm not gonna use this, 
but it's already got the little bit of a sticky bits. So I'm sure if I uh, spend some time, uh, I'll see how the ribbing goes. Maybe it's not the right plane to use, but uh, I think you get the idea. And I'll do something like that. And I'll get it to stick. Um, you see what I mean, right? And away we go. Cool or what? So that's what I'm up to, and like I said, I'm just trying to remember about more mistakes, and, and I'm, thank goodness I haven't uh, purchased, uh, well, uh, the Fokker DR1 was a pretty expensive plane that I purchased the model kit because I was at the museum, but so far I haven't really butchered anything um, expensive, so that's good. Anyways, that's it. I'm off to go do, uh, fortunately, another beautiful things, and hopefully you are too. See ya.